Welcome back to the commonly used Excel charts and functions video series. Today in lesson 11, we will focus on pivot tables. And for the next two lessons, we will also be focusing more on pivot tables and charts. So just before we get started here, I'm just gonna go over a quick outline we have for the next two lessons. So creating pivot tables and charts is a fairly big topic. So we're gonna split it up into two lessons. Lesson 11, which is the lesson we're covering today, will begin with creating pivot tables. And then lesson 12 will follow with creating pivot charts from those pivot tables. So the data set I have in front of me right now is about sales for an imaginary chain store named Good Office, which sells all types of office supplies, both in physical stores and online. Today, this data set only includes data from online sales and not in-store sales. Also, to make it a bit easier on us, I haven't included any data surrounding shipments. We're going to use this data set for this lesson and the next two lessons, so let's take a closer look at it. As you can see, there are 12 columns in this table, and I'm going to pause for a second just so that you can take a closer look at each column heading. It's important to know that no matter how many columns a data set has, you can always group a column into one of two categories, either an identifier or a measure. What are the measures in this case for this table? If you said sales, quantity, discount, and profit, you're correct. The rest of the columns are considered identifiers. In this case, sales and profit are our target measures, but quantity and discount are both important because they help us understand more about sales and profit. So for example, if we've made a high profit, then we know the store is performing well. But if we have a low profit margin or even a negative profit, then we need to drill down to see if the discounts are any problems. Let's take a closer look at the first couple of records. So if we see here, order ID is a number that is used to identify an order. So we look at the order ID for the first order and the order ID for the second order and see that they're different. But if we look at rows three to nine, we can see that the order ID for all those rows are the same. This means that one order can consist of multiple products. Because these uh, rows have the same order ID, the order date, city, and state will be the same, but the product ID, category, subcategory, and product name will be different because it consists of different products. It's important to note here as well that the product name doesn't have a very descriptive name. It's important to remember though, when you're doing real data analysis, you have to use the actual product names to be more specific and to provide greater detail. The next column we're gonna look at is the quantity column, which reports the number of each product ordered. And then the discount column says if there was a discount applied to the transaction or not. The discount column is in a decimal format. So if we look at this cell here, the 0 0.2 means that there was a 20% discount on that order. The last column is the profit column, which is fairly self-explanatory. One thing I wanted to point out is that if you have a profit value in parentheses, such as this cell here, that means that there was a negative profit value. So if we take a look and scroll through our data set a bit, we can see that there are many, many rows to this table. Now, I would like to know how many rows are in total for this entire table, but I don't wanna spend all my time scrolling throughout the table. So one quick and easy way we can do this is to actually click on the order ID cell that has the column header and then click the control key and the down arrow. Now we can see that Excel has automatically taken us to the last row of the entire table. And if we look at this rows number, we can see that this table has 4,116 rows in total. Now, what if I wanna go back up towards the top of the data set? It's a very similar process. Again, press the control key, but this time also press the home key. All right, so that concludes our summary of the data set and an analysis of a couple of the records. So let's move on now to creating the pivot tables.
All right, so to create our pivot table, we're going to go to the insert tab at the top here and move to the left hand side. You can see we have two choices, one that just says pivot table and the second that says recommended pivot tables. I find it's always easier to start from scratch when making your own pivot table, so let's select that first choice. You can see that the pivot table setup menu pops up here and it's asking you to make two choices. The first one is to select a table or range of data that Excel will include in your pivot table. In this case, Excel has automatically selected our entire table of data, so we don't need to make any changes in this case. The second choice is to choose where you want the pivot table to be placed. So this is basically the output location where Excel will put your pivot table. They've automatically selected new worksheet, which is fine, so I will press OK. So now we can see on the left hand side here, we have a blank or empty pivot table, but then on the right, we have a data pane. The upper half of the data pane consists of all our column names, or you can call them data fields. And you can actually drag these data fields into these four boxes in the lower half of our data pane. So let's try playing around with our pivot table. Just a couple moments ago, we found out how many rows were in our table but let's use our pivot table to see if we can confirm that number. I'm going to drag and drop order ID into the values box here. And if I look to the left, you can see my pivot table now has a number in it, but that number is way too big. If I look at the bottom right here, we can see it's taking the sum of the order IDs, which doesn't make any sense. I want count of order IDs. So to change this, I'm going to press on this drop down arrow here and go to the value field settings. I'm going to change sum to count and then press OK. Now, if I go back to my pivot table, you can see that the number is a lot better now and it's 4,115. If I go back to my first page that consists of my entire table, and use the control down arrow to go back to the bottom of my table, you can see that there's 4,116 rows, just like we said before. So our pivot table and our original table have basically the same number. In this case, our pivot table is one less though, because it's not counting the first row in our table, the row that just consists of all the column headers as a row that actually consists of data. All right, so now let's see if we can use any other fields or columns to count the number of records. I'm going to click on my uh, pivot table here and I'm going to uncheck the order ID box. I'm going to go to state here and drag it to my values box. And if we go back to our pivot table, we can see that the count is exactly the same, which is good. Let's see if we can use the pivot table to determine how many unique states there are in this data set. I'm going to remove states from the value box here by unchecking the states box. And then I'm going to drag states into my rows box here. If I go back over to my pivot table, you can see that there's three unique states included in my data set, California, New York, and Texas. We can move the state data field into the columns box by using this uh, uh, drop down menu here and then just selecting move to column labels. By doing that, instead, our uh, state labels are just uh, horizontal instead of vertical. So we have California, New York, and Texas again. Let's change them back to row labels. And then I'm going to add sales, profit, and discount for all of the states. I'm going to go to sales first and put it in the values box, then profit, and then discount. I'm going to go down to my discount uh, value here and change the value field settings to average and press OK. So if we look at our pivot table, we can see it looks really good. The pivot table has summarized sales, profit, and discount for me. Let's do some formatting to make the pivot table a bit easier to understand though. I'm going to highlight all my sales and profit numbers and I'm going to click the dollar sign here just to change it into a monetary value. 
and then I'm going to get rid of my decimal places to make them whole numbers just so that they're easier to read. Then I'm going to go to my discount column here and I'm going to change it to a percentage and it automatically makes it a whole number as well. So great, that looks a lot better. If we take a moment here to analyze our pivot table, we can see that Texas actually lost a lot of money due to their extremely high discount compared to New York and California. The average discount in California and New York were 7 and 6%, where in Texas it was 37%. Now let's see if we can use the pivot table to see the performance for each city. So again, I'm going to click on my pivot table and I'm going to drag my city field right below my state. Ah, that's perfect. We can see that the cities were added underneath all of their respective states. You can notice that there is a little minus sign beside each of the states now, and that just acts as a way to um, collapse or expand the uh, list that's below each state. So for example, with California, I can just use that minus button and it hides all the cities for me. But if I use the plus sign, it'll expand into all the cities for me. We'll, we're gonna call these two signs the shrinking or expanding sign. So this table is pretty easy to read, but if we add or if we had more states and each state had a couple of cities, then the table would become very big and would become very overwhelming to read. This is where a filter can help, so let's try adding a filter to the pivot table. Again, I'm going to click on my table and go down to my rows box and select the drop down arrow by state. I'm going to select the button that says move to report filter, and you can see a filter was added onto the uh, table. So you might be wondering, how do we use this filter? And I'll show you. We're going to go up to the left hand side here to where it says state and all and I'm going to use this drop down menu here. You can see it has my three states um, that are in my data set. I'm going to just select Texas and then press OK. So by doing that my pivot table only displays the cities and the corresponding data that are in the state of Texas. If I press that drop down menu again and uncheck Texas, and this time select the multiple items box and go to New York and California and press OK, you can see it does the same thing. Now my pivot table only includes the cities that were in New York and California and the corresponding data, which makes it easier to read. So alternatively, you can also create a slicer to achieve the same filtering effect. So let's play around with that. I'm going to take a copy of my pivot table and I'm also going to include my filter in that copy there. And I'm just going to paste it uh, to the right of that first pivot table. All right, so now working with the second pivot table that we just pasted, I'm going to take the state field out of the filters box by dragging it down to the rows box. Now I'm going to go to the pivot table analyze tab and go to the insert slicer option. Now I'm going to check off the state box and then press OK. So you can see by using that slicer I now have a box that appears directly on my worksheet that I can use to filter my pivot table. So you can see right now I have California and New York selected which is the being displayed on my pivot table and Texas is not selected, which is why it's not displayed on the pivot table currently. If I want to just include California, I'm just going to click on California and you can see it's highlighted in blue and then the state of California and if its cities are the only uh, data showing up on my pivot table. If I want to select all of the states, I can just use this button here. And then if I want to go back to just selecting specific states, I go back to this button and then click on what I want. So it seems in the end that filter and slicers are very similar in function. So which one should you use? Slicer is more explicit because people can actually see the selection criteria before they click on anything. So if your data set is small, 
or if your users are not familiar with pivot tables, then use Slicer. But if your data set is large and your users are familiar with pivot tables, then choose Filter. This is because it's implicit and takes less space. Filter does have another function, which we will go over next. All right, so the last thing we'll cover today is a super useful feature of the filter function, and that is that it can summarize data for different uh, fields in separate Excel worksheets. So I'm gonna show you how to create summary data for each state. So the first thing we're gonna do actually is delete um, this just by highlighting it or clicking on it and pressing delete. And then we'll de delete this second um, pivot table just by highlighting all the data and pressing delete again. So now here, before we uh, go through that um, summary function, we're just going to go to our state filter and make sure we have all selected and press OK. So just click anywhere on your pivot table and go to that pivot table analyze option here and go to the options menu in the left hand corner here. And then press show report filter pages. State will automatically be highlighted and then press OK. So if we look down at the bottom here, we can see Excel has automatically created a worksheet for each state that we have. So there's California, New York, and Texas. And each worksheet um, displays the summary data for each state. So overall, this concludes our lesson for today. We learned how to create pivot tables, how to add a filter, a slicer, and how to create separate worksheets for each state by using a filter. In the next lesson, we'll go over how to create pivot charts and how to drill down into the data set even more for insights. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next lesson.